Hey YouTubers, it's Dansky. In this video, we're going to be learning how you can create a navigation design in Adobe Photoshop. So let's get started. So we're now in Photoshop and we've got our canvas ready. So we're going to start by selecting the rectangle tool. And we're going to draw the outline of our navbar, something along the lines of this. In the properties palette over on the right, I'm just going to remove the stroke. I'm going to fill this with a shade of, I'm going to choose blue, but you can choose whatever color you like. And I'm going to round off the corners in my example as well. Again, this is just a personal preference, so you don't have to do this, but you can if you like. Then what I'm going to do is divide this shape into four different sections. So I can do that by going to the property palette on the right and I can see the width is 680. So if I divide that by four, that gives me 170. And I can select the rectangle tool, left click anywhere on the canvas and I'll type a width of 170. The height can be anything, it doesn't really matter because we're just measuring the width. Again, let's get rid of that stroke and change the fill to just black, that's fine. If we zoom in a bit, we can just line this up with the left edge. And then we're just gonna duplicate this layer. So you can right click it and duplicate, and we'll just drag that out. Make sure that these butt up against each other. And then just holding shift and pressing the down arrow key, just knock that out of line there. Now what we can do is select both of these shapes, holding shift and selecting them both. And we can actually, we can right click again and go duplicate, but the shortcut for this is on the Mac, Command J, on the PC, Control J. So if you press that, and now just move these out using the arrow keys, that's a much quicker way to duplicate shapes or layers. Okay, so we can see that everything now lines up. So we've measured that correctly. Now selecting all of these shapes, I'm just going to move them down and I think I will just draw some guides on them. Just to make sure everything lines up. So I'm going to go up to view and just select my rulers and zooming in I'm just going to drag the guides out until they snap in place. And you'll see here where we kind of shifted one of these shapes down, we can clearly see now where the, uh, where the two shapes meet. And we can drag the guide out just so it lines up right where those two shapes touch. And we'll do the same again, and then one more on the very right side. Excellent. And I'm gonna just turn off the rulers now, and then just lock the guides, just so we don't accidentally move them out of place. And we can delete these black shapes now, we're finished with those. I'm next gonna select the text tool, Click anywhere on the canvas, and I'm gonna type in capital letters, home. And you can pick any font you like. I'm gonna centralize it, make it bold, and bring the size down a little bit. Something like that. I'm also gonna make the text white. To make sure this is perfectly central, there's a number of ways you can do this. One of the easiest ways that I like to do is just type lots and lots of characters and just make sure that when they touch the left edge and the right edge, that they both touch that edge at the same time. So you know that now it's touching both edges. If I delete all these extra E's in this case off the end, you know that the space left and right is now equal. And again, I'm going to duplicate this layer and just move that across. Get that last one over here. Again, I'm going to do the same thing. Just keep typing these letters. So you can see here, it's not quite central. I can just tap it into place with the arrow keys and then remove those extra letter E's. There we go. Sometimes you can do it by eye as well, just to make sure it's in the right spot. And you know that now it's perfectly in the center. And now what you can do is just select these different bits of home text. 
And then up here, we can use the distribute horizontal centers. Just click that and it will line them all up. So it will space them all out equally between each other. And once they're all positioned correctly, you can change the names to whatever they need to say. So we're going to go about gallery. And then the last one, we can have contact. Perfect. I'm just going to switch off my guides for a second. And the last thing I want to create is some dividers between each of these sections. So if we just zoom in and turn our guides back on, we can select our line tool, make sure we've got it set to one point. We'll take off the stroke and black is fine for now. And holding shift, we can just drag this down. And we'll just position this one here. It doesn't matter too much if you position it to the left or the right of the divider because it's going to be such a small detail, one pixel being whether it's left or right that not many people will notice. So at the moment this is just a one pixel divider so I could make this white and you'd have something that looks like that. So clearly separating the different parts of the navbar. What we're going to do for this tutorial is we're going to have one that is lighter and one that is darker and I'll show you what I mean in a minute. So if we just take this divider we've created and we sample the black ground color and we'll just make it a bit darker than that. So something like this. And then we'll duplicate this layer and move it to the right side of the divider. And what we're going to do is again sample the background, but we're going to make it lighter this time. And when I zoom out and turn off the guides, maybe just bring this one a touch, touch lighter. You'll see it creates a different kind of divide. Almost like there's a little kind of ridge in between the left side and the right side. And that's done by just having one slightly dark divider and one slightly lighter divider than the background colour they sit on. So I'm happy with that. So I'm just going to call these left and right, just so I remember. And I'm going to duplicate those. And then switching my guides back on, I can now just move these out. So I've got the dark half on the left of the guide and then the lighter half on the right side of the guide. And again, duplicate and using the arrow keys, just move this last one into position. Zooming in to check it's all right, excellent. And I'm actually going to add one last thing now. So I've added my dividers, the background blue, I just think it needs a little bit more depth. So what I'm going to do is we're going to add a gradient. So if we right click our layer and go to blending options, and we'll just untick preview for the time being and go to gradient overlay. And I'm going to select our first color, which is the blue. And then we can turn our preview on. And now again, I'm going to select this blue, but it's going to be a slightly, let's have a look, slightly darker version, slightly lighter version. So it starts darker at the top and then the further up it goes, the lighter it gets. Now this of course may mean that you need to adjust your dividers here. As, as well as adjusting the color, you can bring the opacity down like so. So you can see here that adding the gradient, our right half of the divider, the lighter half has actually got a bit lost in the background. So let's just bring that up. Perfect. Okay, so now we've got this left color. Let's just make sure we repeat these across the other layers. So this one is 80%. 80%. And the right one, let's just check that color. You can double click the layer here to get the color reference. So this six digit color reference, we just copy that. Double click the next layer and then paste it. And paste again. So we know that they're all exactly the same. 
And there we go, we've created a simple navigation bar in Adobe Photoshop. As always guys, if you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, share and subscribe for more and I'll see you next time. Take care.